This is our second video on moments centroids in the center of mass. In our first video, we actually didn't do any integration, but we did build up all of the definitions and information and formula that we need to be able to perform some integration. So let's just go back a few slides here to review. What we found is that if we have a region which consists of n rectangles, each with an area a sub i, and the center of each rectangle is x sub i, y sub i, remember that the center of a rectangle is the same as the centroid. And if that rectangle is the face of a rectangular lamina, which has some weight associated to it, that lamina having constant density, density and constant thickness, then the center of the rectangle is also the center of mass of that rectangular lamina. So we could calculate the center of mass or the centroid of that system by calculating the moments of the rectangles about the y-axis and then dividing by the entire area of all the rectangles added up. And then that'll give me my x-coordinate of the centroid. And the y-coordinate has a similar formula. So now let's take a general region under a function. This is not a, made up of rectangles, but what can we do? Well, we're going to go ahead and subdivide our interval from A to B into n subintervals of equal length, and that's going to give me n strips. And then I'm going to replace that strip of the original region with a rectangle. So now I'm going to approximate the moment of this particular region about either the x-axis or the y-axis by the moment of this collection or system of rectangles. So and we're going to make things a little bit easier. In order to check, find the height of the rectangle, we're going to use the uh, midpoint rule. So we're going to choose our height to be the function value uh, at the midpoint of the subinterval. So my x sub 1 star is the midpoint between x0 and x1. And the height will be chosen to be f of x sub i star. So our area is our width, delta x, times the height, which is the function value at that midpoint. And then the centroid of the rectangle is the center of the rectangle. So to get to the center of the rectangle, well, my x sub i star is already my midpoint. So that's the x coordinate of the center of the rectangle. And then I just need to go halfway to the top of the rectangle. So half of the function value evaluated at the midpoint. And the centroid then is, is the center. So my moments about the x-axis for the entire system, I would just take each area and multiply it by the corresponding y-coordinate of its center or centroid. Same thing for a rectangle. So here's the area, here's the y-coordinate of the center of that rectangle. And so I can write that as one half times the sum of the function value evaluated at the midpoint squared times delta x. Now, if I let the number of rectangles go to infinity, 
I have a Riemann sum, so my result will be a integral. And I seem to have lost my lower bound on my integral. So that should be the integral from a to b of the quantity f of x squared dx with a multiplier of 1 half out in front. Now I can do the same idea with the moment about the y-axis. Uh, it's just going to be the area of the rectangle times the x-coordinate of the center of mass or centroid or center. And that is just my x sub i star. Same area, still taking the width times the height there. And if I let the number of rectangles go to infinity, this is another Riemann sum. And now my integral has the integrand x times f of x. And of course, finding the area is something we did in Calc 1. So that's a straightforward computation, just the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So my formula for the x-coordinate of the centroid is just going to be 1 over a times the integral from a to b of x times f of x dx. And for the y-coordinate, I have a little bit more complicated uh, integral. It's still 1 over a, but now I'm going to have 1 half quantity f of x squared dx in the integral. Let's work out an example. So here I have this region. I can consider it the face of a lamina, or I could just consider it as a geometric region. I'd like to find the centroid of this region. So the, it's a parabola. The equation is y equals 4 minus x squared. And we'll be using the formulas that we just derived in the previous discussion. Now, notice that we do have a line of symmetry for this region. It's not a nice rectangle, but it does have one line of symmetry. And so the centroid has to lie on that line of symmetry. And so without doing any work just from symmetry, I get that the x-coordinate of the centroid is going to be 0. Let's calculate the y-coordinate. That's going to be, well, 1 half. And I have to take the function formula and square it and integrate that. So it's pretty easy when it's a polynomial. I can use FOIL to perform the square. And then, uh, well, what am I going to do here is take advantage of symmetry. My bounds are opposite. And so within this integrand, uh, all of this whole integrand, all of these terms are even functions. So what I could do is instead of going from negative 2 to 2, I'll go from 0 to 2 and multiply the integral by 2. And so 2 times 1 half will just give me 1. So now let's find the antiderivative and evaluate that between 0 and 2, which is certainly pretty simple because now uh, the evaluation at 0 is just 0. And I get 256 over 15. That's just the moment. I still need to calculate the area. Now that's straightforward. It just says y, but it should say 4. So that is a correction there. y equals 4 minus x squared. So I'll need to correct that again. At least in the subsequent here, I said, oh, let me go ahead and take advantage of symmetry, multiply this by 2, and have my bounds go from 0 to 2. And that's a correction again. Simple antiderivative, simple evaluation. Now, 
Now I've got the area, I've got the uh, moment about the x-axis, so now I can calculate the y-coordinate. So that'll be the 256 over 15 divided by 32 over 3, but dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, and that is going to give me then 8 over 5. So the centroid is here. I'm still using the center of mass location. It's just for our, our symbol uh, because, again, for us, centroid and center of mass of a lamina are the same thing. One more correction. Look at a more complicated example. This is the original drawing we had when we first started talking about this. It's a much more complicated function. Uh, and uh, the formulas, though, we don't get any symmetries here. So there is no uh, shortcut we can take. We need to calculate both uh, coordinates of the centroid. So I'm going to start by uh, calculating the integral associated with x bar, and that's my moments about the y-axis. It's just a polynomial, so I can go ahead and multiply that out. I don't have any symmetric bounds, so I don't get to make any reductions here either. I just have to find the antiderivative and evaluate it. So, oops, looks like I skipped ahead here. In full disclosure, um, I use technology to help calculate this, uh, these fractions. Uh, they get uh, pretty big. So um, if you have a calculator that can help you do uh, fractions, it uh, makes a big difference. And then we go ahead and find the moment about the x-axis. That is this formula over here this integral right here. In the end, we have to divide by the area. So let's just calculate the moment. So here, we got to sharpen up the algebra skills because now I can't just use FOIL. I've got three terms on the inside. So I'm going to have to do this polynomial multiplication, collect some like terms. Now, perform the antiderivative and the eva get the evaluation. So wow, that's kind of a ridiculous uh, fraction there. Uh, where it's nicer to use smaller numbers, but perfectly legitimate uh, as, a, as a value for our moment. It's inconvenient, but now we can go ahead and calculate x bar. We'll take our m y, divide it by the area. Oh, better calculate the area. The area over here is just the integral of f of x dx. So I'll divide by this fraction the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. And I'll do the same thing to get y bar, but I'll use the moment with respect to x. And so our centroid has these coordinates. And it's located right about there, which makes looks like a sensible thing. I always like to plot the centroid uh, to see if it's a, a sensible uh, number. Because if you think about center of mass, it should be a balancing point. Uh, so it's not always easy to check by eye, but I would have been concerned if it had been very close to one of the edges of this region, or if it had been outside that region, I would be uh, concerned as well. well. Let's take a look at this example here. Um, now, here we have a uh, x written as a function of y. And we should be able to adapt our formulas uh, for this case where x is a function of y to be able to calculate the centroid of this shaded region. So if I just, instead of having a, a f of x inside, I have f of y 
my bounds now go from C to D, which are the corresponding bounds on Y for the region. And for my moment about the x-axis, now I'm going to have y times f of y in the integral. So really, uh, if we just think about this, all we've done is uh, interchange x and y with the original formulas that we had. So let's go ahead and use these formulas. Obviously, the area. Uh, is still just going to be the integral of f of y dy. And I'm going to do a little bit of algebra with this. The way it's given here, um, it's nice. It tells us where the vertex is at uh, 2 comma 4. But for our application, it's worth it to multiply it out collect the like terms. So now I have 4y minus y squared is the uh, equation for this parabola. So I'll need to square that. My bounds now in terms of y go from 1 to 4. So I use FOIL. I don't have any symmetric bounds, no opposites there. So I can't take advantage of any symmetry. And this region doesn't have any line of symmetry. So I'm just going to have to work through it. But it's all polynomials. And so I can just use the power rule and again perform the evaluation. I'll do the same thing uh, to get my uh, moment about the x-axis. I'll take y times f of y multiply that out, use the power rule, and evaluate that to get 81 over 4. I need the area. That's just f of y dy. And so I get a nice integer value of 9 coming out of that. So my x-coordinate would be the moment about y divided by the area. And that gives me 17 over 10. The y-coordinate of the centroid would be the moment about the x-axis divided by a. And that gives me 9 fourths. And the rotation then is about here. And that looks reasonable. All right, that's the rotation for the centroid. Now, suppose that I have a region which has bounded above and below by two curves. How would that change uh, our calculation of the centroid of that region? Well, if we go back to our derivation, we would replace that region with a system of rectangles. And I need to find the center of each rectangle and then the area of each rectangle. So the area of each rectangle would be the height, so that would be the difference between the function values at, we'll still use the midpoint, at the midpoint. And the centroid, well, the uh, center of the rectangle is going to be, have an x-coordinate be equal to the midpoint of that subintegral. But to get this to the center of a rectangle here, let's think about this. Sure, uh, I need to find the center. Um, uh, I mean, I need to take, find half the height. But half the height is not the y-coordinate, right? It's going to be the y-coordinate. Um, I mean, sorry, it's not going to be the function value. I'd have to still add in this other portion. So let me let me actually write this. So here's the center of the rectangle. So I need this portion, which is half the height of the rectangle, which would be half the difference of the function values. But then I still need this bit down here, which is going to be my uh, g function value. 
So that's why there's two parts over here. This half part, that tells me half the height of the rectangle. And then I need to add on this bit right here, which is the function value of g at that midpoint. So if I remove the parentheses here and collect the like terms, I have g minus half of g, so that would be like plus half of g. So I actually have half of f plus g evaluated at that midpoint. So the moment about the y-axis is still going to be the area times the uh, sum of the areas times the x-coordinate of the center of each rectangle. So I can replace that with their formula. And I get a similar formula to what I had before. But now instead of just having one function, I have x multiplied by the difference between the top and the bottom function. It's the moment about the x-axis where things get a little bit different because our area is still um, the uh, difference, so the area is still this part right here. It's the height of the rectangle times its width. That's still the area. But now we said that the y-coordinate is one-half uh, f of x plus g of x uh, evaluated at the midpoint. Um, so I guess you could actually interpret that as being the average of the function value. But now we're going to do some algebra because this is the product of conjugates. So I can simplify that as just being the first one squared minus the second one squared. So we'll have a slightly different formula then for the moment about the x-axis. So instead of having just one thing squared, we're going to have the difference of two squares inside the integral. So these are our new formulas. And in order to find, we're still going to divide by the area, and so we'll just calculate the area the way we calculated it in Calc 1. So here we have a region between a line and a parabola, and we'd like to calculate its centroid. So we use the formulas that we just found. Now, we don't have a symmetric region, so there is no line of symmetry here. But at least when we're performing the integration, we're going to have symmetric bounds. So we're going to look out for even and odd functions when we're performing the integration. So the moment about the y-axis, when I multiply that out, I see that I have uh, two odd terms, one even term. Well, since I have symmetric bounds, the integral of the odd terms, or the odd function, is just going to be 0. So I can just reduce that to calculating the integral of the even term. Now I'll change my bounds from 0 to 1 and multiply that by 2. I just brought the negative sign out in front there. So when I take that antiderivative and evaluate that, I get the moment as being negative 2 thirds. The area, very simple, just top curve minus the bottom curve. Uh, again, here I've got this middle term is odd, and the first and last term are even. So I can simplify the integral to just being twice the integral from 0 to 1 of the even functions. So 2 minus x squared. I can go ahead and work out that integral. And now let's calculate the moment about the x-axis. Here, remember, I take the top 
the square of the top minus the square of the bottom. So I need to do some algebra, multiply that out, collect the like terms. You can still take advantage of my bounds, which are opposite. And I see I have an even function, another even function, and an odd function. All right, so I have one odd function, so I can simplify that a little bit. And uh, I multiply it by 2. That takes care of the 1 half multiplier. And evaluate that integral. And now I can go ahead and take each one of those moments, divide it by my area, which I found to be 10 thirds. Get negative 1 fifth for the x coordinate. And then for the y coordinate, I get negative 6 over 25. There's my centroid. Make my little symbol. Let's just put a little dot where that is. So negative one fifth, negative six over 25. Um, that's about uh, negative one fourth. So negative one fifth and negative one fourth. So somewhere around here. And that should be about right. So that ends our discussion on uh, centroids and center of mass. I hope you found this video useful.